Hey guys, we're on my computer today. So I don't know. I, I don't know if this is backwards. Is it backwards? I think it's still backwards. I don't know how to fix it, you guys. I'm on. I tried um, to put you on my laptop to see if that kind of helped a little bit because in the past I've had this on my phone. And um, anyway, there's two of you. Hi, <laughs> three. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Four, oh my gosh. Um, I think I'm still backwards. That's what I was just saying. Um, I'm, I'm on my laptop today. I thought that if I kind of tried this on my laptop, it might fix the problem, but I think that it's still, I think I'm still backwards. Yeah, I think, anyway, I don't know. I think I'm backwards. Help me fix it. <laughs> I don't know how to fix it. I know that it's so confusing and I know it's a pain in the butt. By the way, it's raining here. It's pouring with rain. I went for a really long walk this morning and um, the thunder clouds were building up and everything. You can kind of see. See, yeah, though, no, that's pretty. I'll keep it open. Yeah, it's like pouring with rain. So, anyway, today we're going to learn how to play some double stops. That's what we're kind of working on with the majority of my students at the moment is we're learning how to play double stops. And um, that's just when you play multiple strings, at this, well, it's when you play two notes at the same time. So um, that's what we're gonna be kind of going over today. But some of you have asked me about my viola. And so I thought I would talk to you about my viola. Um, this is like the love of my life. It's totally, <laughs> we have like, a love-hate relationship. The majority of the time I complain about this beautiful thing. Um, some days we love each other, some days we really hate each other. Some days I have no idea what this is, you know. Um, some days we're like soulmates. <laughs> so it's totally a relationship. And um, it's made out of maple and spruce, I believe. And it's made from a wonderful guy in Salt Lake City in Utah. His name is J.P. Lucas. And this was made, this was born in 2005. So um, it's 2018 now. So we've been together a long time. And, you know, one of the things that really helped this instrument open up was to put some Kevlar on it. And you see this, oops. This spot right here, this this is Kevlar, and probably like six or seven years ago, I was with a friend of mine in San Francisco. We went to the to a luthier that he really loved, and he put Kevlar on this for me. I forget how much it was. I don't think it was that you know expensive, and it just completely opened up the sound of my instrument, like in a huge, huge way. So um, my viola has a really nice, uh, a nice rich sound. And it used to sound really tight. It used to sound like it was under a lot of tension, you know? It still kind of sounds a bit like that um, sometimes. But um, I am in the process of getting another instrument. I commissioned a viola from Hiroshi Azuka. Sorry, I'm not sure where to look. Like, I'm trying to look to see if you guys are. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Are you guys trying to comment? Oh, you're commenting. Hi. <laughs> it's not backwards. Okay. Hi, you guys. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, it's just, it looks a bit different on my. Um, on my laptop. So, okay. Yeah, so I'm in the process of commissioning a new viola from this wonderful maker. He's in Media, Pennsylvania. His name's Hiroshi Izuka. And he, he makes, he's really well known for his violas and his violins and cellos, I guess. But I think in particular, he's really well known for his violas. So they're about, um, they start, I think they're starting at like 28,000 now. They're, they're expensive, you know. Um, I'm trying to sell my my violin, not my viola. I don't think I can ever really part with this. It's such a part of me right now. Um, and forever, I think it'll be. Um, but it looks a bit different. Let me see if I can. 
Let me see if I can find a picture of this new one because it's in the process of, of being made and everything. So he sent me a picture this past weekend. So I have a picture of it kind of just hanging out. <laughs> so it looks like that. And it's an interesting kind of shape. It's kind of heavier on the bottom there. And um, you won't be able to see, but the scroll is actually hollow and they're just beautiful. They're just so beautiful. So they have a really good projection. Like they don't, uh, I don't think they really have like a nasally sound. They have a rich sound and um, they're, they're really, they have a, a nice projection. So it's not like, you know, typically violas kind of, you should just plug this back in. They can kind of blend in too much and then you just don't hear it at all. Um, hi, you guys. You're so sweet. Thank you so much for all your comments. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, um, I'm thinking, do you guys have any other questions since I'm kind of babbling at the moment? Um, I'm trying to think, like, if I've seen any, any recent comments that had questions. Um, my current viola, my viola is 26,000. Um, actually, instruments appreciate over time. So if you get a really good one, um, you know, they they appreciate in value, which is really neat. I was thinking of selling my car. I have um, a 2015 Mazda, and I was thinking of selling that um, because I looked on Kelly Blue Book, and, and I think they're going for around fourteen or 15000 if I remember correctly. So I could sell that and put that towards the new viola, I'm gonna have to get a bow with it, like a matching bow. I mean, I have bows, but they they match my, that viola. So I would need to kind of get, get a different bow. So I think in the grand scheme, it's gonna be kind of an expensive investment, <laughs> but something that will, you know, I think it's a good investment. So um, anyway, I was thinking of selling my car and then I have a violin that I'm selling. So if I put them together, um, then I'll have the value of the viola that I'm buying and then I can just get a new car. <laughs> I don't know. I'm crazy. I like to, I'm just crazy. Um, the strings I use are Vision Solo. So um, they, they're kind of all green. And um, this tailpiece actually is designed to have fine tuners on all of them. But I, I just didn't really like the way that looks, so I took a long time ago, took them all off except for the A. So yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? Um, I've used Eva Parazzi's on these on this viola, um, but for some reason they just don't really sound that good on this instrument. And um, I've just been kind of using Vision solos for years and years. I don't know, you know, strings are very expensive, so it's not something that I'm like really wanting to you know, spend like a hundred and some dollars on to just see if I like them, you know, and play on them for, you know, six months or I usually play on my strings for a really long time. Any general tips to overcome anxiety during performances? Oh my gosh, I really, actually, I really struggle with that. Um, and I think that's mostly because you have to practice performing. Like it's like when you're in school and you get up to talk in front of your class or, you know, even at work, you need to, um, you get kind of nervous, but if you, if it's kind of just part of your routine and it's just something that you do, then I think that it's not quite as scary and quite as daunting. But I think, you know, when you're doing something really precise on your instrument, it's really technical um, and it's really easy to make a mistake, then there's kind of a next level of, of anxiety that comes with that. But I think you just really have to practice performing. So, um, you just, it's kind of not so scary. So just practice playing for your friends or practice even just like recording yourself. Cause that can always, that can be like a little bit stressful too. like press the record button and then see what happens. So um, let me see. I find many people enjoy enjoying both the viola and the violin. I personally play the violin. What may be if any, the reason for playing the, Playing both, okay. Um, well, I think it it make, it opens up, you know, the repertoire that you can play, and also you can on the viola. You need to be able to read the viola clef and the treble clef. 
so the alto clef and the treble clef. So it's kind of nice if you play the violin because then you can kind of, you can play all the violin repertoire on this <laughs> too. You can just play it like it's a violin, but then at the same time, you can also read the violin clef. I don't know. I think that it's just kind of fun to be able to to play both of them. I don't play the violin anymore. Um, I teach, that's so funny because the majority of my students are violinists. You know, but I always teach on my viola because I spend all day, I teach a lot of beginners, you know, or intermediate students. And so um, it's kind of more fun for me to, to do that on the viola because it's a little bit, it would be kind of boring for me to just play it on the, on the violin, but on the viola, at least I'm with my instrument. And anyway, so I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying a lot of my students are violinists. <laughs> I'd probably say like, 98% of my students that play the violin. Um, but then I like try and secretly try and like get them to play the viola too. So um, anyway, let me kind of stop babbling because I did want to show you something today. Um, we're going to talk about double stops. So um, it's really helpful like if you've been practicing hand patterns a little bit. And I always talk about like there's three main ones, but then I was thinking like the other day, actually there's one month, one more that I, I always forget. So the other one <laughs> that I always forget is, uh, sorry, let me just pull this down. The other one that I always forget is this one. So you can also play a position that's made entirely out of whole steps too. So there's this one, right? You find this a lot. This is the basic hand pattern. And then you have this low two hand pattern. And then you have this extended third finger. So we're just kind of like shifting where the half step is. Right, there it is there, there it is there. You can also start it, start your positions from the, from the bottom on a whole step where you can start everything on a half step too. So I'm starting on a half step, but I could do the basic hand pattern here. I could do the low two hand pattern here. I could do the extended three. You know, but then there's also, whether you're here or you're here doesn't really matter, you can have one that's made out of whole steps. So anyway, what we're going to do today, last lesson we talked about the basic hand pattern and all the intervals you can do on one string. So maybe we can just do a, a really quick recap of that, and then we'll go right into playing double stops. So in the basic hand pattern, there's just a, there's only so many intervals that you can play on one string given this pattern. So the first one that's really the most basic is just doing do re mi. Actually, let me tune. Probably tune. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain in the background, but it's a rainy day. Okay. Yeah, it's just pouring with rain. <laughs> okay. So. Um, we're going to start with whole steps. Whole steps sound like do, re, mi. Then you have your half step, which sounds like jaws. And then you have one more do, re, this little interval, this whole step. Then you have thirds after that. So every time you do open two in the basic hand pattern, it sounds like always has to sound like Vivaldi. So if I play it's not in tune. But you know, you, wouldn't, might, you might not necessarily know that um, unless you're listening for that interval, if you're listening for that song. That's why it's really helpful. So you're not just fishing for like, you know, whatever note this is. If it's on the violin, it's a C sharp. On the viola, it's an F sharp. So you're not just trying to fish for this note. You're fishing for, you're listening for an interval. So you have one major third here, then you have a minor third. We just played all of our seconds, right? So if I just feel that distance, put this one on top, put move them together. This always sounds like Iron Man. And then you have another minor third between two and four here. You see you have a half step and a whole step. One and a half steps. Also sounds like Iron Man. And then after thirds, you have fourths, and you have two of those in the basic hand pattern. Sounds like here comes the red. And you see, I'm just putting all my fingers down in this little pattern. The other one is between one and four. 
them and all these other fingers are in the right place, which is really nice. And then the last one you can do on one string in the basic hand pattern is a perfect fifth. Sounds like Star Wars. <laughs> So that's all of the things you can do on one string. Um, and then after that, we can we can do the intervals between two strings in the basic hand pattern, which will be important. But actually, what I really wanted to talk to you about today was how to play sixths. So sixths are kind of the easiest, in my opinion, double stop to play um, because they're just, they're consecutive fingers, but they are between two strings. So um, they're kind of made out of whole steps and half steps. You're just feeling those between two strings. So if you, we're gonna take six in the basic hand pattern. So if your first finger is your lower finger and your fourth finger is your upper finger, so you have lowest, next lowest, next lowest, and then the highest finger, right? Your lower finger will always be on the lower string. So you see how my second finger is on the upper string. Now as I continue to go up, I swap them over with their fingers now on the upper string. And so we're just kind of creeping them up the strings like this, just going up the stairs. And it's nice because you're already used to putting down multiple fingers at once. So it's not like you have to do this and then this, or this and then this. You're actually just used to doing this already. So um, we're gonna start with open, open which is not a sixth. When you have open strings, two open strings, you have a perfect fifth. So let's just, let me just show you. Then you feel a whole step up. Hop that over, whole step up. Hop that over. Now with your three, put it right next to two, and then relax, just flop fourth finger down. So you don't have to muscle it down, you just let it flop down. Let me check and see if there's any questions. Oh, we're in Italy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess it's just raining everywhere. Okay, so that's how that goes. We're gonna just continue going all the way up the strings, and then we're gonna play a song. So I'll show you how to, to add a song. So if we're on the violin, let's just pretend this is the violin. So this is this fourth finger here would be an A. So I'm not gonna go and play open A again. I'm gonna just go right to first finger and open. Pop that over. Pop that over. the basic hand pattern going up. We're going to use fourth finger on the way up. Go right to first finger. So we're kind of doing that, but we're doing that between two strings. We're going to use the open string, open, and then we're going to third finger, but just tag, tag second finger along with you, open to third, but tag second finger, and it's just a lot more reliable way of playing your open strings is if you use like a pattern, that way you know how your fingers relate to each other. Right, so like in the basic hand pattern, you have a half step here, which means your fingers are really squished together. So when you do a six, then you do this minor six, which is when you have a half step between the strings. Um, you're gonna make sure that you don't do that. You're gonna do this, because this will be out of tune. And when you find your, your, your um, double stop, you always find it based on the lower finger, right? And your lower finger is always in relation to first finger, so you see how these don't really move at least when you're first learning. So they're built off of each other. So they're a lot more stable, more likely to be in tune than like this, which is not really built off of anything. It may be in tune, fingers crossed, <laughs> but this will be. Okay, so um, double stops are basically like you're adding another harmonious voice to the main melody. So this week I've been showing everyone how to play You Are My Sunshine. <laughs> So if you 
want to make it interesting, you just add a double, yeah, a double stop, or you just add a sixth. So you don't have to think about it too hard. The version of "You Are My Sunshine" I'm showing you is in the key of G. So, but on the viola, it's the key of C. But anyway, um, so you're gonna have this basic hand pattern, basic hand pattern, and then low two, low two, right? So um, you just plug that in. And you'll kind of, you don't have to think about it too hard. <laughs> so this is how it would be if you add a double stop or add a sixth. So I'm starting on my open. I'll just pick up the next open. Just keep track of the melody. The melody is away from the upper string. For our purposes, at least. Upper string's the melody. So here you'll see I have a low two on the A string because that's we're in the key of G. We have a C natural here. And then reach up. But here on the lower string, we have an F sharp. So we have two different hand patterns. can obviously do to, to make the song more interesting. But if you just keep it in sixths, or if you use your open strings and you keep that fifth there on the open, then um, you, you just really don't have to think too hard. And I never really want to think too hard. Um, so especially when you're doing something complicated on the instrument, just like keep it simple and um, you'll be less likely to mess things up you know so um this is super helpful since i was as a beginner struggling to perform double stops and happy birthday oh yeah 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 you know what let's um also do happy birthday um happy birthday is a a good one you can just you know you can do this with any piece all you need to do is you need to if you're let's say you're working on something in the waltz book or in the suzuki book um, you just need to know what the melody is and you know, you need to know the key signature so you know the patterns that you're dealing with on whatever string you're on, right? So because like if I played You Are My Sunshine, but I decided to put two here, that's not in the right key signature. It's not the right hand pattern. changing the third okay so but let's take happy birthday so you have Day, you're going to have the same pattern. If you start an open D, keep an F sharp. Okay, if we want to make it interesting, I'm going to just take my the finger directly below the melody, put it on this, the lower string. Okay, so we have. Provide you, you practice your double stops kind of like we were talking about at the beginning. Just play them in the basic hand pattern. Well, play the basic hand pattern on one string and then come back down and then just add the finger right below to the lower string. And that's how you get a sixth. Now, um, thirds are different when you're playing a double stop, but it's the thirds double stop. Thirds are harder because there's a third in between your fingers, so they're harder to kind of tune up. You see 
see how there's, I'm getting backward looking in the camera. So it's every other finger rather than six are just consecutive fingers building up like this. So work on those first. And then when you practice your thirds, and that's another lesson for another day, um, it's if you're used to kind of putting your fingers in this little pattern, then um, it's going to be more likely to be in tune, you know, and that's just anywhere, anywhere you are on the fingerboard. If you've got your main patterns sharp, then um, you're more likely to be in tune. So, okay, see you later, Kevin. Actually, I'm going to go pretty soon, too. So, um, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if you have a, like, before anyone goes, tell me if you have any requests. For, for things, you know? I was thinking of showing you how to play some simple things um, or showing you some of my favorite songs from the books that I, I use. Um, answering questions, I don't know. If you have any, any suggestions for anything, let me know. Um, I just wanna briefly say, because I can't really, I don't, I guess I could put this in later. But if you're interested in lessons or you're looking for a teacher, I would absolutely love to work with you. And you can just visit my website. It's violinviolamasterclass.com. And you can contact me through there and set things up. I teach so many of you online. So, um, oh, the Talamon Viola Concerto. Um, da, 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 is that, no, the, the second movement is, um, let me see if I can um, pull that up really quickly. Can you hear the thunder? The, if I remember correctly, the Telemann Viola Concerto second movement is kind of like, it looks rhythmically complicated. Let's see. Um, Something like that. Just, you know, I don't know why I'm looking at it on this website. Um, if your question is mostly about the um, rhythm, then that's, is, it, is your question about rhythm? Playing by ear, hearing a song, if you're gonna, yeah, yeah. Um, how to play by ear. That's where, you know, intervals really are helpful. It's just showing me a little portion of um, the Telemann. Let me just find a different website to pull this up from. Um, Hearts, Viola Solo. I absolutely, I love the Telemann. It's such a beautiful concerto. Okay. IMSLP is just taking a minute. Let's see, just a sec. Okay. Da 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 dum da 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 dum. Well, I guess the main thing. Um, I'm not sure what particular you're struggling with with the Telemann concerto, but um, you know, rhythm's always a, a tricky thing. So. Um, you've got to have rhythm and you have to have pitch before you can kind of really like make music. Otherwise, it's going to be just whatever. <laughs> so try to get a sense of the beat. Ba -da -da -da. <laughs> and also, you know, it's in three. Da, 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 da. So try to feel kind of where the important beats are. You know, you, you wouldn't necessarily want. Right? It just sounds kind of weird if you phrase it like that. But you never know, like your technique might be making that happen <laughs> without you knowing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you, you know, you always want beat one to be nice and heavy. Something, I don't know. Um, could you briefly int introduce the general way to 
do a general staccato. Oh, this is staccato or spiccato. Staccato is when it's on the string. I mean, generally the way that I teach staccato is just um, you pop the bow on the string, you move, and you stop. So you just want a separation in it. But you see how my arm's working? If my, if my bow wasn't there, my arm would look like this, so it wouldn't look like this. This you're going to get a not so good sound. This is a much better sound. And you see how my fingers are dropping the, the bow on the string versus this. Right? So this is a little bit better. So you just pop the bow there, you move, and you stop. And if you want your string, it'll vibrate nice and wide, and then it'll completely stop. But you don't need to grab the string again. Can you hear that? You just want... And that comes from just moving and stopping. Instead of move, stop, clench, it's not that. Like this. Um, if you're thinking about... Those notes have staccatos on them. But, you know, it's more... Um, you kind of have to think about stylistically what kind of staccato it is. Because if it's... You know, if it's Bach, it's not going to be like an aggressive staccato. It's just they were more separated in that time versus. It's not that. It's. You see how there's a separation between? Anyway, um, I hope that answers your question. You guys, I think it's been about 30 minutes, so I'm going to go. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you in a little bit. Not sure what I'm going to talk about next time. I always just kind of just get on here and whatever pops into my head we talk about. <laughs> so hope that was interesting. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon. Let's see if I can figure this out. Bye. <laughs>